Good day, monkeys. I'm Eddie Braverman. That's Midas Mulligan Magoo. And this is Not Safe for Work on WallStreetOasis.com. This is episode 25 of Not Safe for Work on WallStreetOasis.com. This week we're uh, covering the rapture that wasn't, LinkedIn's crazy first day, and we're taking a look at some of the guns currently leveled at Goldman Sachs and others. So let's do this thing. Well, here it is Monday, and what do you know? We all survived the weekend. That's got to be a real bummer for Robert Fitzpatrick, the guy who blew his entire life savings on billboards, urging the rest of us heathens to repent because the end was nigh. Now here's what a couple of smartasses Midas and I are. This video is going up on Monday morning, but we're actually recording this on Friday afternoon. Oh, tell God. <laughs> I'm spending the entire day tomorrow in the Champagne region on a private tour of one of the France's finest champagne producers, so if it is, in, in fact, the end of the world, at least I'll be spending my last day doing what I love. What about you, bro? You got any big plans tonight? Uh, well, Eddie, since you know exactly where I am and exactly what I've been up to lately, uh, it's a very loaded question you're asking me here, because as much as I'd like to tell, I just can't. Uh, I'm actually going to be doing something similar, you know, seaside hotel, retardedly rich menu of food, women, music, so nice. I'm going to be enjoying myself a little bit, you know, just in case... Uh, you know, we do disappear. But uh, since I like to engage a little bit of demagoguery of my own from time to time, uh, I tend to celebrate all these end-of-day events uh, by getting completely hammered. So retarded, in fact, that a nuclear missile cock couldn't fuck me over. And uh, as our buddy Fitzpatrick uh, likes to say, you know, the end really is near, depending on your perspective. Um, I don't really think he's that far out of whack with his prog... And uh, the benefit of the doubt. A person off of his own, he's just mystical aura, I guess. Uh, you know, as Andy Warhol put it in the future, everyone will get their 15 minutes of fame, and I just hope he's maximizing his. Yep, amen. Well, speaking of end times, how about LinkedIn's debut? Holy shit, talk about managing an IPO hire. Morgan Stanley and their syndicate partners must have twisted some serious arms to get that kind of aftermarket support. Reminded me of the way that we used to do deals. Uh, you know, we knew which ones were hot and which ones weren't. And if we knew that we had a hot one coming up, we'd force our clients to buy all the shit deals we had lined up between now and then. Then when the hot deal would come around, we told them that they wouldn't get any unless they committed to buy an X number of freely trading shares in the aftermarket, regardless of price, just to pump the deal higher. This deal was crazy. Um, son of a bitch was valued at $11.6 billion when it hit the high of, high of the day at $122.70. Woo. Even after backing off its highs, it closed up 110% on the day. So what do you want to bet that Twitter and Groupon and Zynga and a whole shitload of lesser players file to go public next week after this shit show? I wouldn't take that bet. You'd clean me out in a heartbeat. The real question, though, is, is LinkedIn that dog shit stock that they've been pushing real hard for something bigger that's coming along? Because if that's the case, those, <laughs> you know, <laughs> those plays are going to clean up. But uh, actually, like... I want to take a, a, a little bit of a, a esoteric perspective here on comparing this topic and the first one. Uh, to me, it's almost a testament on how much people need some sort of organized religion. You know, whether we're talking about the end of days cometh, uh, God will smite us all for being sinners, or markets are efficient, Eddie, you're a conspiracy theorist, Morgan nice. is simply doing its underwriting duty and thereby adding much needed liquidity to markets. It's all a big fucking joke. I mean, uh, as our as our buddy uh, Gary V pointed out in that video you posted a while back, uh, we're in the in the midst of a social media bubble. Uh, it'll probably quell and then probably even get even bigger a few years from now. Uh, what just about everyone fails to realize is that when you deal with these non brick and mortar businesses, revenues are really really hard to prognosticate since we have no clue what these businesses are going to look like five, ten, fifteen years from now since we have nothing to go off. I mean, exactly. it's all always a matter of opinion and timing and uh i recall a, a point some years back you know when uh when the tesla ipo was in the works and and everybody was so excited about it and predicting all these great numbers and then what happened market pops elon's wife pawns his ass and you know the ipo goes <laughs> linkedin was a combination of good timing uh you know bullishly bullish greed and the bandwagon effect i mean hats off to morgan for for the way they punked all the sheep into into the herd and, and got them to do what they wanted to do. Um, I, I don't expect to see, uh, you know, as insane a situation with the other social media companies, but what the hell do I know? 
you know, absolutely. My hat's off to Morgan. I mean, it's obviously a well-managed deal. People are saying that they kind of screwed LinkedIn because they left all that money on the table, but they didn't screw LinkedIn. LinkedIn got way more money than they should have got. So exactly. it's just, just an example of a well-managed deal. Uh, yeah. But now let's move on to a deal that's not so well managed. <laughs> uh, Goldman seems to be taking it from every direction these days. Um, on the heels of the New York AG announcing investigations into the firm's practices, they were just notified by the CFTC last week that the commission intends to recommend aiding and abetting civil fraud and supervision-related charges against the trade clearing unit at the bank. Oh, my. Yeah. Uh, European regulators are on them like a dirty shirt. And now the the Justice Department is going over all their swap transactions with a fine tooth comb. Uh huh. Abacus hasn't gone away either, and, and the firm's admitting that they've received even more subpoenas. I, I guess the question is, how much longer can Lloyd Blankfein keep his job? You know, <laughs> the stock's dropping like a rock. The firm's getting sued or investigated by someone else every day. It seems like. He says he isn't going anywhere, but how much longer will shareholders tolerate this bullshit? I mean, not to mention, what happens if he gets indicted for perjury or obstruction? What do you think? Well, listen, you know, Gaddafi says he's not going anywhere. Mubarak didn't want to go anywhere. Nobody wants to go anywhere. But if you're <laughs> going to go, your ass is going to fucking go. I, mean, <laughs> I was actually going to write about this issue, and I still might, uh, from a little different perspective. Uh, back when Goldman was a private company, you know, they were the, the watermark of how to do business on Wall Street. But, you know, with the company going public, you got that... The classic case of sort of the, the hardworking, diligent parent, you know, that, that builds up, you know, the, the family franchise. And then a little bit on that's kind of what's been happening in slow motion with Goldman ever since they've gone public. And now it's just catching up to them. I mean, they're an investment bank. Obviously, shareholders are only interested in the bottom line. So they've been doing what they have to do to maximize profits at a time when everybody was looking the other way. But, you know, when the crisis came around, when they should have been smart and been humble, you know, they basically poked their finger into the regulator's eyes and, you know, what do you expect? And, you know, now now the, the, the feds have a chance to screw them over, and that's exactly what we're doing. I mean, uh, and as far as uh, Lloyd goes, I think you were you were absolutely right with your with your Timmy Geithner, you know, prediction. <laughs> He's probably going to wind up running the show or, or somebody from the government is probably going to wind up taking over Lloyd's position as sort of a trade off to just leave them alone. I mean, they they giggled, they poked their finger in the jelly belly of the government. And now that the state is coming back for their fa- pound of flesh, not much you can do about it. And like you said, it's coming from all angles. So it's not like they can just, you know, turn the other cheek. They're going to get punched right back into its a center of direction. So. Much like our buddy DSK, I got no pity for you, Goldman. Made your own bed, now you're going to sleep in it. Yeah. Are well, you read any good books lately? Nah, man, I, I have not read anything. I'm just <laughs> going off your coattails this week. <laughs> well, like I said, I uh, last week I, I have a fiction book to recommend, but it's not the one I was talking about last week because the fact is I'm not far enough into that one yet to know if it's really good. And the right. reason for that is... I'm all of a sudden now hooked on this, thanks to HBO, the bastards, I'm hooked on Game of Thrones. Um, um, you know, great new show, and it prompted me to buy the book, which is, you know, it's a type of book I would never, ever buy in my life. Mm-hmm. I, I'm not into the whole fantasy thing, but man, is it well written, great story. And uh, and I found a, a box set with the first four books of the series on Amazon for under 20 bucks. So, um Actually, I can't recommend it enough. It's uh, it's really well written. It's a really great story, and uh, if you're enjoying the show, it follow the show follows the books really really well. So um, check it out. I mean, it's it's definitely worth reading. And if you like so, reading about uh, people casting? getting their heads cut off and stuff like that, you'll love the books. Are we going to be casting spells next week? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's it's not some bullshit Twilight zombie kind of deal. It's uh, at least not so far. It's, you know, it's all about politics mostly and, uh, and warfare. <laughs> but uh, that's all I got this week. So uh, if you don't have anything else, let's bid these boys uh, farewell. Yeah, let's let's go get fucked up. <laughs> all right, y'all. Keep the powder dry and your heads low, and uh, we'll see you next week on Not Safe for Work. Take, Take care. Easy,